Welcome to this webinar on presentation skills for your research project. So you want to know more about presentation skills. This video is great for those who are doing a dissertation research project, such as the extended project qualification, want to learn how to structure a presentation, want to know what makes a presentation academic, want tips for presenting verbally and in writing, and want to know how to address challenges when it comes to presenting. Here's what we'll cover in this video. What are presentations all about and what forms can they take? How to plan and structure your presentation using the rule of three, what makes a presentation academic, tips for presenting confidently, responding to questions as part of your presentation, key challenges in presentations, and a recap on written presentation skills. So, being a presentation, what's it all about and what form might it take? Doing a presentation is about being able to present your findings, conclusions, and an evaluation to an audience. It's about reviewing and evaluating a piece of work or project and your own learning. It's about presenting the outcomes in an organized manner engaging with an audience and often responding to questions. You may do a presentation in a variety of forms and in a variety of different places, for example, projects at schools, in future studies or work, or at the end of a research project, for example, the extended project qualification. What form should your presentation take? Well, the presentation may be produced or delivered by any means suitable. It will typically be face to face, although alternatives are possible if the presentation needs to happen remotely. For a research project, like the extended project qualification, the presentation is typically up to 10 minutes long, with a further interval of time allocated to a question and answer session at the end. However, there is no strict time limit. You may choose to use presentational aids, such as PowerPoint slides, overhead projectors, wall displays, and printed handouts for your audience. You may also choose a different method of presenting, such as a video or DVD. In the case of a research project, such as the extended project qualification or any presentation where you are presenting your findings, the presentation should summarise what the research project is about, what was done, the findings and conclusions that can be drawn from it too. It must be appropriate to the selected audience in terms of length, language used, the space used and the conditions, for example, the room selected, and in terms of any handouts and technology used. The presentation must demonstrate the use of appropriate communication skills, and you should be able to respond to questioning from the audience in a capable manner. Before we go into how to plan a presentation and how to deliver a presentation confidently, think about presentations that you have seen in the past. You may have seen these in a number of forms, for example, presentations given by your teachers, political leaders or celebrities on television or YouTube stars. It's important to reflect on these and think about the sort of presenter that you want to be before planning and delivering your presentation. Some questions to think about when you're reflecting on other presentations that you've seen include what made it good or bad? What did the presenter say and do? Did you learn anything and how did it help you to learn? How did you feel when watching the presentation? Was it clear who the audience of the presentation was? Was it clear who the presenter was targeting whilst they were presenting? Thinking about these points is helpful before you start planning your own presentation. Now that you've reflected on other presentations that you've seen, what are the key questions you should be asking yourself when planning your own presentation? Who are your audience? If you're doing a research project, such as the extended project qualification, you will be presenting to a teacher or tutor assessor. In conjunction with your teacher, it may be decided to expand the audience to others, such as classmates, if it's appropriate and practical to do so. Think about who you are presenting to then. What tone should you use with them? What level of information will they be looking to hear about? What is the best way for presenting to this audience? What will they know about the topic already? 
In the case of an EPQ, you should assume that you will need to explain your topic and research question from the beginning. Don't assume that your audience know why your research is important. Secondly, what is the purpose of your presentation? In the case of a research project, it's about presenting your research findings, conclusions and evaluation in a succinct way that gives a well-rounded overview of your project. You're not only summarising what was in your project, but selling it to your audience as an interesting topic that they should and hopefully want to hear about. Thirdly, what are the main messages that you want them to take away? What are the main arguments and key points that you have made in your research project? These are the ones that you want to be presenting first and foremost. Importantly, just like, for example, your dissertation that you might have written, your presentation should be in response to your research question. Importantly, in relation to your main messages, you should keep your information to the key essential points. If you have produced an extended project qualification over several months, you will have far more to say than you can fit into a short 10 minute presentation. It's important to think hard about finding and presenting a few key points. Try not to cover too much ground in this short space of time. Overall, you can think of your presentation as a journey which you're taking your audience on. You'll be telling the audience your destination, outlining a roadmap for where your presentation is going, giving them a time frame, and letting your riders ask questions, which will come at the end of your journey, or in this case, your presentation. Next, you should think about the structure of your presentation and how you will break down the time that you've got to deliver it in. Here you can see an example structure for how you could break down a 10 minute long presentation, followed by a three to five minute long question and answer, otherwise known as Q&A session. This includes an introduction, roughly one minute long, this should introduce your topic, your research question, the background and context for your research question. This should outline the main points and arguments that you are going to cover in your presentation and the fact that you conducted a literature review, if doing a dissertation, as part of your research project. You could have one PowerPoint presentation slide for the introduction. The literature review. Roughly two and a half minutes long, this should be a brief summary of your literature and key sources used as part of your research project. One PowerPoint slide is suggested for this section too. The main body. This will be the longest part of your presentation. Here we've recommended breaking it down into three sections of roughly equal length within the main body. This could be about a minute and a half for each of your main points, each one on different presentation slide. Your research project will have been long. In the case of a dissertation research project, you'll have written several thousand words, so you won't be expected to cover every single point made during the project itself. It'll be about extracting your key points and arguments, providing some evidence for these, showing how they link and why they're important for answering your research question. Remember, you should also address counter arguments and objections too, just like you did in the research project itself. This will help show your audience a balanced picture in response to the question and will show that you have considered a broad range of evidence. Conclusion. This is where you will conclude your findings, summarising the key arguments and counter arguments and make a short evaluation on your project work. This could cover a reflection on the process and what you learned, challenges as part of your project and what you would do if you had more time again. Again, we recommend one PowerPoint presentation slide for the conclusion. Review and bibliography. This section comes after the conclusion and is the chance for you to review the research project process itself. This mirrors the review section that comes after your conclusion in a written dissertation research project. In this section of the presentation, you review the extent to which project aims were met, any limitations to the project, possible changes that might have been made and general lessons about the project process. You can show your bibliography in a PowerPoint slide at the end to show the full list of sources used as part of your research project. Finally, the Q&A session. You should expect to receive some questions from your audience on the basis of the topic you have presented and asking you to reflect on your project process. This is expected to be three to five minutes long. We will go into these a bit later. Structuring and planning, the rule of three. 
Within the main section of your presentation, one technique that you might use to present your research project findings is the rule of three. You'll notice on the previous slide that the main body was broken down into three sections too. The rule of three is a pretty commonly used method to get messages across publicly. You may have heard it in the context of famous sayings. For example, stop, look and listen, a well-known public safety announcement. Or the good, the bad and the ugly from a Clint Eastwood Western. And then there's blood, sweat and tears from Winston Churchill. These all seem to stick. That's because using three elements is catchy and helps people remember things. The rule of three involves building your talk in stages. So how can you do this? Strip down all of the arguments, all of your evidence and all of your extensive analysis to the three major points that you believe make your case and respond to your research question. Consider this research question. Is there a generational difference in attitudes and actions towards climate change? Now, here are the three main points that you might choose to cover, supported by and introducing sufficient evidence to back them up. One, young people appear to be more concerned about the impact of climate change on our planet and therefore are more likely to take preventative action. This is shown by. Two, young people seem to perceive older generations as being slow and resistant about taking action on climate change. We see this in. And three, middle-aged slash older people require more convincing to change their beliefs. However, when they do, they are more able to afford to take preventative actions. Here, you can see that the three main arguments have been presented. You may also talk about some key supporting evidence and verbally reference some authors of secondary sources you have used. These could also be reflected in any handouts that you give to your audience. So does this mean that other information in your project is not important? No, it means that you have selected the most pivotal arguments and counterarguments that respond to your research question and ones that will be riveting for your audience as a focus. Overall, it's good to remember the value of repeating your key points. State what your key points will be in the introduction, then say them in the main presentation body, then remind the audience that you have said them again in the conclusion. This is another application of the rule of three. Varied types of repetition aids your communication. As well as writing and arguing academically as part of your research project, here are some tips for presenting academically too. Present your arguments and provide evidence. Reference quotes, ideas, data and images. You should do this on any PowerPoint slides, in handouts and verbally where possible. However, a critical point here is that your slides should not be too text heavy. Include your bibliography as your final slide. Be critical when selecting your materials and medium for presentation. What is going to help you present best? Include the counter arguments and different viewpoints you have used in your project to avoid bias. Use appropriate academic language throughout. You can refer to video five in this series on arguments and counter arguments for more tips on the types of language that help you avoid bias and present points of view. Use links between different sections of your presentation. Having structure in your verbal presentation is just as important as when it's written down. Check the marking grid, if there is one, for any academic presentation that you are doing. To reiterate a key point, make sure that there isn't too much text on your slides if you are using a PowerPoint presentation. Slides should be visually appealing. Too much text means you are likely to lose or distract your audience and prevents them from understanding your main points or messages. To see more on other skills useful for approaching your research project and presentation in an academic way, you can see other videos in this series on literature reviews and finding trustworthy sources, referencing and writing a bibliography, creating arguments and counter arguments, strengthening your approach to essay and dissertation writing and critical thinking for your research project. We'll now go into some practical tips on how to present confidently. Remember, you won't appear as nervous as you might feel. Your audience are supporting you. Here are the tips to help you present in a confident way. 
and your presentation. Preparation is key in helping you feel like it's manageable and you have done all you can to make it a success. Practice. Here and time yourself doing the presentation, where you can see how you come across externally when you are practicing. This will help you see where you might be able to improve and what it feels like to do the presentation in practice. Also to assure that you're doing a great job. Arrive early, arrive on time to your presentation so that you don't cause yourself any unnecessary stress. Enthusiasm, be enthusiastic when you're presenting. Your enthusiasm for your topic and presentation will really rub off on those who are watching, helping them to feel similarly enthusiastic about your presentation. A smile really does go a long way. Confident body language. Standing up straight and using hand gestures to be expressive shows confidence. Make sure to face your audience directly. Don't look at any screen or wall charts that you're using too much. The focus and attention should be on your audience. Project your voice. Speaking loudly and clearly is a must in order to engage your audience. Make eye contact. Making eye contact with your audience is a good way to engage them. This shows your audience, be it your tutor assessor or classmates, that you are connecting with them and that you want them to be there. Use cue cards. If it will help you as a prompt, use cue cards with some simple structured notes on them as reminders for your points throughout the presentation. Writing out word for word what you're going to say is not a good idea. This will mean that you're reading something instead of truly presenting to your audience. It prevents you engaging with the audience and having a word for word script might mean that you get lost or lose your place. Finally, and once again, make sure to face your audience directly. Remember not to read text directly off your slides. This is a common mistake and pitfall of many presentations. If you are reading off your slides, you won't be facing your audience, which means you won't be engaging them properly. If you're doing an extended project qualification, you may well have the opportunity to conduct a rehearsal of your presentation. Depending on your teacher or supervisor, you might be given feedback on this with a view to helping you improve your performance. However, if your presentation is part of an assessment, you'll only be giving this once for the purposes of it being marked. As discussed, when looking at the structure of a presentation, you should leave time at the end of your presentation for questions to be asked of you. This Q&A will be in the region of three to five minutes long. Questions are designed to hear more about the process of your research project, evaluate your learning, check your depth of understanding on your topic and research question, and reflect on your experience of doing a research project. Questions are the chance for you to shine even more and discuss your enthusiasm, experience and knowledge surrounding your research question. You should expect to face both questions about the project process as well as potential questions about some of the specific points you have made during your presentation. Your tutor assessor might have questions about specific facts or statistics that you have talked about. If you are nervous about this, it is worth remembering that you will be likely to know more about these details than anyone in your audience. This is because you'll have spent several months researching your chosen topic. So you should be confident about this and try to stay relaxed. In addition to your tutor assessor asking about particular information or facts contained in your presentation, here are some sort of questions that you could be asked. So it's good to think about responses to these when preparing for the presentation. Which of the resources you found and used proved to be the most useful to you and why? Looking back at your project, is there anything you would have done differently if you did it again? If so, why? Did you encounter any particular difficulties when approaching this topic and how did you deal with them? If you weren't able to deal with them, how would you do this next time? And what areas of your topic do you think provide opportunities for further exploration and why? This list of questions isn't exhaustive and there could be others that you're asked. This gives an indication, however, of the sorts of questions you'll be expected to address. We'll now discuss some of the challenges to do with presentation that you should consider. These shouldn't make the presentation seem scarier. In fact, they can be used as a checklist when you're planning, reviewing and practicing your presentation. Consider the challenge your presentation might pose for your audience. Will the topic be very unfamiliar to your audience? Are there complex topics that need to be explained to make sure your presentation makes sense to the audience? 
This isn't about explaining and defining every concept again. It's making sure that any key ones to what you're saying are presented clearly. Is there a lot of data to present? If so, how will you condense this? How can you show some of this in a concise way? How will you present this visually, for example, with PowerPoint slides or charts? You might be tempted to try and put in everything that you know. This is a place where you should really check yourself. Remember, it's about summarising your research findings and evaluating the research project process. Think about how you will tackle these challenges and questions at the planning stage of your presentation to be able to address them early and avoid any pitfalls. Finally, while we're on the subject of presentation skills, part of your overall research project presentation is the whole package of how the entire project is presented. This includes a reminder on your written presentation skills if you are doing a dissertation research project. Care should be taken with the presentation of the dissertation too, with appropriate use of headings, subheadings, paragraphing, page numbers, labelling of diagrams and font size and styles. You should also take care to use language accurately and appropriately, for example, spelling, grammar and punctuation. You should take care in the use of technical language to do with your topic and use phrases and words that have an appropriately academic, neutral and formal style. In other words, language that avoids bias. For more information on presentation of different elements of your dissertation, such as the literature review, bibliography and how to reference correctly, you can see the other videos in our series. So what are our final tips for your research project presentation? One, and ahead. Think carefully about your presentation structure. Although you will be talking and the presentation will be spoken, you still need to have a clear plan for what you will say. Don't try to cover too much with around 10 minutes. You will only have time to present your main arguments as a summary and won't have space to go into the same level of depth as your research project. Your presentation is about reflecting and summarising, not duplicating all the work you have already done. Do think about your audience. This will drive the way you do your presentation and what you include in it. It will affect both the level of information you decide to share and how to share it. If you are truly thinking about your audience, you will engage them through eye contact, confident body language and good visual materials. Three, practice, practice, practice. Find yourself when you practice. It's also worth recording yourself to see how you come across. Four, think about potential questions and challenges. How can you eliminate typical pitfalls that people come across when presenting? How can you anticipate questions and be ready to answer them in order to reflect fully on your learning throughout the research project process? So what can you do next? Think about presentations you've seen previously and the sort of presenter you want to be. Use our presentation structure and rule of three to prepare your presentation and consult your teacher for more and get practicing. With that, you now have familiarised yourself with the basic concepts of presentation skills. Good luck with your presentation ahead. Thanks for listening.